Holy crap. I'm out of high speed data. So I won't be able to post anything till oh, tomorrow. Which I shouldn't care about because I post too, too much anyway. I thought I could do this tomorrow. Unless I die in the middle of the night. <laughs> I don't want to die. No. No. Well, I want to die when somebody can watch me die. <laughs> Embarrass, embarrassed and or scare everybody on, on the way out. But I'm not going to do it on purpose. And I want to do it in front of strangers. I get squished in front of impressionable kids. You got to learn. I say you learn death. Death, death, death. My, my courtship of death is it's not homicide. And at this point, it's recreational, and I don't want to die. Well, I'm, I don't know, what is the word I'm looking for? I don't care one way or another. <laughs> I'm gonna, not going to clutch. I'm not going <laughs> to extract or attract destruction. What the hell am I talking about? What am I? Oh, boy. Here it comes again. Just in the mood. I feel like that stupid bit who had her boyfriend killed so she could become famous YouTube and she was a dunce and wore too much makeup and I don't know. Uh, simply manic. Check on her check her channel. She's in prison now, but her stuff's still up and I don't know, make you feel better about yourself. A lot better about yourself if you are a content creator, which I been I've been accused of being. Don't know one way or another. Yep, I'm thinking about the '60s. It was earlier, but I broke my tea kettle and then remembered I'd ordered accidentally an identical one, so I was able to fix that and then. I lost a bunch of other stuff, and my room's a mess, and I need to start fixing that before I get my studio set up, and my big, great <laughs> national boglum flag, which I, I, th I hope will catch on, available on Amazon. I'm not a, I'm not a sponsor, but I love Amazon. I don't care what anybody fucking thinks. It makes my life easier, and I get to buy weird stuff because they have nearly everything weird in there that I need. Well, I want. No, I need very little, but I'm quite the little materialist, non-commercial materialist. I don't let poverty stop me. Hell no. <laughs> I'm going to change topics. Panhandling. Not Cobra panhandling. I'm not going to go into that. I have my views, and I'm gonna, I think you probably share them, and there's no reason in going on about that, because we will not bash Cobra, at least not in my presence. Not twice. Oh, hell no. We love us some Cobra. I used to be a street poet on the streets of Santa Cruz and my own poetry, and it was slim pickings. I didn't make very much money, but I don't even know how I got by for those a couple, a couple of lean years. But I did, and I had oh, friends like Joe and a bunch of other friends who really kept me alive. Very kind. I still love them, not just for that, but just because they mostly youngsters and really cool ones, university kids. I don't know. They showed me such extreme kindness and deference that I, you can't forget that. You know, whatever it did with they did with future lives, they have that, and I know. 
a couple of Joe's friends still remember me kindly. And that's, yeah. <laughs> I'm not the most, mostly uh, nostalgic guy in the world, but I remember that. I can't forget that. Taught me further loan lessons and kindness. But yeah, I took tips. Sat on a notepad crate nearly every day, nearly seven days a week, just to making make my candles and vodka and tobacco. Food was generally free because I went to soup kitchens and whatnot and caged it and caged it. Never had to steal. Well, indirection, but that is such a weird avenue. I'm not going to ever go into that. Joe knows it. Joe knows big chunks of my soul. And he takes good care of them. He does. He's, you know, he's a keeper, a godly man, a man of God. A deacon in the Catholic Church, which is a big thing. So proud of him for going through that process. If I help that a little bit, it might, that is a worthy achievement. And I have, I'm a man of very, very few achievements. But the ones I have are pretty profoundly good. So panhandling is not a sin. <laughs> it's nothing to shame people for at all, ever. To give with a harp, open heart and to forget it immediately is the best thing you can do. You don't have, just never care what somebody's going to do with the money. It's going to hurt, hurt them or help them. If you help them by giving with a few kind words, a blessing if you know how to bless. So, yeah. I feel kind of giddy when I give, and I'm just very, very happy. I'm eight. I have the extra two help. That's wonderful because I haven't for a big chunk of my life, but when I can. And I'm not, not. Yeah, I'm not bragging. Trust me, I have given, I've received way more than I'll ever give. So it's, <laughs> I kind of have to, and I kind of like it, and I kind of love it. And I try to forget it, but for the, you know, I feel clean, and I, I really want to thank the person for their the opportunity to give. It's a very Christian thing, but atheists can do it too. Anybody can do that. Everybody, I think everybody should. I think it should be an obligation, unless you're a jackass. You're free to be a jackass, but it's 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 going to hinder you with your soul, with your brain, and your conscience down the road. You're going to die a little bit. I don't know, less evolved for having lived so. Uh, a great example of. Giving love and joy and giving. I was living in Portland, Oregon, Oregon, with my ex, who's my eternal ex. She's, she, I still love her. We're still friends, but we don't live together. But we, we share a profound bond. A Joe can tell you about the roller coaster that has been, but you know, that never ends. That's good. She's the mother of my dog, and my dog is my everything. So for that reason, we both stay together because of Cyril the dog, because he's a good dog, and I love him, and he's my boy. He's the only thing that always makes me happy when I see him. Never fails to make life worth living. Yeah, a dog. <laughs> and not the, uh, not the fur baby bullshit. I kind of despise that. Very few dogs have the caliber to be a worthy dog. D A W G. As CEO would know, a bog dog, a goth dog, just a dog, a big dog. <laughs> the 
indistinct species. <laughs> Which, oh boy, where was my doggo? <laughs> Interesting genetic net mix, and not always in not always in good ways, but mostly great things. But yeah, he's he's a weaponized hobo dog when he needs to be. And yeah, we hobo I hoboed with him for a while. He knew how to trot track. I, I, te I tested him in the woods on a really cold trail, but we'd been we'd been up it before months before, and he smelled every every inch. I mean, until we, we came to my camp, which he'd only visit came to from the totally the upper up other side. And he sat down with his professional look on his dog face, and damn, that's a good dog. <laughs> oh, he's a real dog. <laughs> He's kind of, he's got a little hound in him, so he's got a good sniffer. Very smart dog, very good memory. Uh, capable of extreme extreme violence. We had to partially get rid of that. Once in a while, he, if he's on a, his leash, he'll get snappy. Ne always on his leash. He doesn't do that when he's off. Thank God. <laughs> oh, no. That wouldn't be, wouldn't be good. So panhandling, yeah, I've done some good panhandlers. Very, very few of them make enough money to, you know, buy a giant house. That's an urban myth. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. There are usually women who can do it so well, but they're usually supporting a man. And often enough, they're the ones who turns out to be junkies. And, the, you know, the housewives, the Karens love these women. Like, oh my God, that poor woman and the, the Panhandler is a good rap. You can watch them make tons of money and kind of glare at me. And I was always dirt broke. <laughs> Could have used a couple of bucks. And uh, I don't know, maybe the poetry validated me or I had a couple other extinct techniques, but they were all honest. honest. That was my, my gig. Being honest about it. <laughs> it just, I couldn't do it in, in fake ways. Couldn't do it. <sighs> just couldn't. I couldn't make myself do that. I used to run the work for food chant sign back in the days when you got work. I loved that. I got just tons of temporary labor that way. A couple of really long jobs. Uh, did it panhand uh, hitchhiking a lot, and that was great. Hitchhiking, make, making just enough money to keep keep afloat. Uh, it was I think it was like fifteen bucks was my my issue. If I had that much money, I didn't have to you know panhandle and keep scooting up the highway. Under that, <coughs> I got very savvy. Uh, in the end, pay, uh, Living that way is a full-time job, by the way. Even though parts of it are joyous and wonderful, and you get to teach yourself your own self, uh, my own brand of meditation, uh, through old beat poetry, really was my research tool, and still a big part of me. Still a giant part of me. Oh, Uncle Jack Kerouac, T. Jean, <coughs> Burroughs to a degree, Gans Ginsburg to beat the band. They learned a lot from him. Only a few of his po poems, but they're really long poems. Read the, the poem, poem Al, if you haven't, uh, you probably need to. That's an essential part of proper education in bohemian circles, like well, being a bog, being, you know, if you think you're an alternative think thinker, you really need to know that. You have to know that. I mean, there's no way around it. And if you never read much, there's nothing you can do about that because ideas can become in word form. If you don't know enough words, you really can't think much. And I'm sorry, that's kind of harsh, but it's absolutely true. Uh, if you can be a... a Performing a performance artist or even a painter, you can get away with that. You don't need it really. 
you're exercising a different part of your brain. So yeah, and most you know plastic artists fully they're generally not the greatest thinkers. <laughs> different part of the brain. <laughs> when it comes to plastic part art, I can't do it. I can barely do this, and it's an adjunct of what I used to do. But again, I'm going to whine about having a stroke, but I had a stroke. And that changed a lot. I'm doing a lot, a lot better now. I'm doing well enough. I was blind for a year. That was interesting. I got over that. I'm not blind anymore, but I, I let my cataracts go until I didn't walk across the street. I could, I could no longer read labels. Uh, I was a mess. So I got the surgeries, which the surgeries are, you know, they're not weird. If you have the chance to get it done, get it done. Nine times out of ten, it works. And if it works, you get your eyesight back. And yeah, the surgery is weird. And for a month, it's a big pain in the ass, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> and it, you know, if you get squeamish on people poking into your eyes, they drug the hell out of you. I don't know what the drugs are, but man, they were groovy. It kept, except it's hard to stay awake. They got to make, make you stay awake. And you really wanted to go into the knot of it all. But, and if you feel like it's wonderful for a couple hours afterwards. Uh, so you people who love drugs as much as I do, give it a try. <laughs> Which I can just do it without having to get my eyes open. Cut up, but, but it was kind of worth it in so many ways, even the drug way. After the stroke, I had to get a spinal tap. That wasn't fun. That is, that's intrusion, intrusive. That is weird. It had to be done. And the guy who gave me the shot was joking around about it because he knew what kind of guy I was. Like, yeah, you can take it. Uh, apparently, he knew what a hobo and a. <laughs> tramp how they deal with things you deal with a lot of pain in that career sometimes a couple of miles away from anywhere and you just you have to hobble you have to make it through that trail i you know f going through floods with hypothermia i did that once again joe was around for that <laughs> the aftermath god that was miserable it was weird it's hard to talk about at length i think i burned out that topic and nobody really wanted to hear about it because they don't want to think, know how, what, what people have to go through unless it comes in. Oh my God, I'm so traumatized for me. I don't do that to you. I think of an Irish and hobo temperament that it's going to turn into jokes. Even while I'm doing some shitty stuff, I know I've got a joke in this one. This is going to make a great joke when I stop screaming. It happened with my broke my arm and, they shot me full of crap, but they, they shot me the, and set it into too early and got the morphine in way too, or too, I mean late, and and the morphine too late. And they weren't going to give me morphine, but I kind of communed with a nurse in a pleading sense. And I just told her, look, at, listen, I'm not a junkie. I've done my share of drugs, but... I'm not a junkie. Can you just give me some morphine? Please do it right now. And a nicotine patch. Stat. And she came back with a some nic nicotine gum, which did hit the spot, and a big jolt of morphine when the doctor decided not to be a this. And I think the woman understood that I would go back and find that guy and skin him alive. I think there were a lot of threats. Because that whole experience of the busted arm, it was a bad, badly busted arm. I fell off a ladder, and I was sober. I was landscaping. My migraine, pruning a tree on a very strong, long, very high ladder on concrete. Kids, don't do that. Don't, don't do that shit. Don't fucking don't do it. Again, another misadventure and snapped uh, hands, ham, ham, 
Prime's dream. That was... And when it, sna it snaps, you really feel a snap. I mean, you're like, oh, God. And I was about a, a mile and a half away from the tra trailhead and about <laughs> crawling and broad day daylight, uh, daylight and people walking by and nobody even tried to help. Sons of bitches. Went to the bus and they wouldn't give me the the ramp you know when you're a bum people treat you like absolute dog shit <laughs> i mean horrible <laughs> no some bus drivers are the best people in the world and some of them are just solid gold a few of them belong in the gulag i will say no more but yeah they're gulag fodder <laughs> fucking sons of bitches and again, it's always Joe. Joe, he's got a lot of hobo in him. He's skirted it. He knew all the old hobo at Companions. And they loved him. I mean, <laughs> they loved him. I mean, uh, he's, he's so, a solid working class. He knew how to hitchhike. He'd been poor. And he, he read his Steinbeck, so he's going to... It's just kind of like Steinbeck. Back in those days, it kind of was, because there was a cast of characters on the avenue. I mean, they... They were great. They are just... God, they were funny. Wasn't always funny down there, but chunks of it were hilarious. Just... I'm so happy I lived through them, and I'm glad Joe was around to have lived through them, too. Because they were... They, <laughs> He remembers. He, you know, he, he's a remember, and he uses it in his faith and just his thinking. Good man, that Joe. No, best friend he could ever have. So what else? Were all, oh yeah, Pan Am one. Yeah. Did I give to panhandlers when I was a panhandler? Sometimes, yeah. To professional courtesy and to be a professional doesn't mean you make a lot of money it means you have a technique you have certain artistry and you're a good person and you're not lying and if you pan handle for a beer go ahead i hate they work will work for a beer sign it's overdone it's tacky don't like it uh visions of a cheese burger that was good for a while but it got copied Yeah, well, that's what it was. It was something I could do just about anywhere, anytime. So when you're pan I mean, you're hitchhiking around, and I was not a, a railroad hobo. I was definitely a rubber a leather tramp, which means on foot. It's the same thing. But using hobo will tell you the same. <laughs> it's, yeah. If you're a leather tramp, you're just not in a hurry. <laughs> And you go through the same stuff. Except I was almost always solitary. I, I kind of hitched with friends, and they were gener almost always green, and it was a nightmare. And I would ditch them as <laughs> quickly as, as I decently could before I wanted to kill them. Because so there, if you're the head hitchhiker... There are certain rules, like never complain and just do everything I say. There's a reason for everything I teach you. No, you don't get to do everything you want. You have to listen to me, so I'll get you through this whole thing, and we'll feed us, get us fed somehow or another, and we'll get there as quickly as we can because I'm going to try to get you out, out, out back there because I'm sick of you. That happens. Only one guy I know was a great partner. <laughs> Little hippie guy with you know, a biker dad. And God, he was a riot. He was good at the stuff he was good at that I wasn't, and vice versa. A team. Had no so much fun with him. It was a, it's a quick, it's only three or four days, but it was a good three or four days. 
And yeah, when you're on the road or on the streets, you make friends really quickly and very deeply. Because you gotta kinda. <laughs> because you're depending on each other. It's a partnership. And yeah, it is life and death sometimes. Very realistically. Yeah, you can die out there. Generally not from being killed. That's rarity, but too much booze and too little shelter, hypothermia, accidents. Generally not drugs, because I didn't hang around a lot of, a lot of drug people when I was hitching. No. <laughs> They're too preoccupied. Booze, of course. Booze was the animus. Not a bad thing for me. When I was hitching, when I was off the road, yeah, you got dicey. Again, it's something you have to go through, and people will help you thinking that you'll probably live through it and at least come to find some kind of conclusion, or yeah, that's their gamble, and I love that gamble. It's a worth worthwhile gambling gamble. And I know I'm plodding on, but to a degree, this stuff is worth hearing. I hope so, because there's stuff to learn from me. Weird stuff, esoteric stuff that you're not going to learn very much anywhere else. Because my tramp sword, we're, we're pretty extinct. People don't do it the same way at all, because... The culture has changed, media has changed, perspective has changed, and and all the cool hobos died. Oh, so many dead friends. But on that happy note, thanks for listening. <laughs>